Hi everyone, in this video we are going to cover the common lab equipment that you might see in the lab. This is going to be the equipment that I will expect you to know on your lab equipment and safety quiz as well as the equipment that will be tested on your Unit 1 test. Our first piece of equipment is a beaker. Beakers are used for holding different chemicals. A lot of times we will conduct our experiments in a beaker. One thing that's important to note is that they are not to be used for measuring precisely. The markings on a beaker are only estimates. So anytime you need to measure something with a precise volume, you need to use a more accurate tool and then pour it into a beaker. There's lots of different sizes of beakers, ranging from very small up to a large beaker that might be used for something like an ice bath. Graduated cylinders are used for measuring um, volumes of liquids precisely. You will, it's important to read from the meniscus at eye level. The meniscus is the curved um, level at the top of the liquid that you're measuring. You want to read at the bottom of the meniscus always. The plastic ring that's on a graduated cylinder, that is there so that the liquid doesn't drip down the sides and get on your hands. And again, just like beakers, the sizes of graduated cylinders can vary. Erlenmeyer flasks are used to approximately measure the volume of various liquids. Light beakers, they can't be used for measuring exact volumes or precise volumes. They are useful to run reactions in because you can mix them by swirling them and not worry as much about anything spilling out. Florence flasks are used to boil liquids. You can also collect gases in them if applicable, and again, the sizes can vary. Test tubes are used to hold chemicals um, while you're do conducting an experiment. They are not to be used to measure precisely. There's actually no markings on a test tube for volume, but you know approximately what the total volume is. If you need to smell what's going on in your test tube, make sure you waft the vapors towards you. Don't directly stick your face over the top of a test tube. You would always want to aim the test tube away from your face. The sizes can vary. Um, you can label your tubes so that you know what's happening in each of your test tubes. Um, make sure that you notice that the test tube rack is on the back of your handout. A test tube clamp is used for carrying or holding hot test tubes so that you don't burn your hands. Crucible tongs can be used to carry the crucible. They also have other uses that can be used to pick up things that might be hot. Burette and burette clamps. A burette can precisely dispense a measured amount of liquids. The markings on a burette are very precise. The burette um, clamp holds the burette to the ring stand. You can have a double burette clamp that holds two burettes or a single that just holds one. A clay triangle is used to hold a crucible in place on a ring stand. It also helps absorb and spread the heat from the flames so that you don't damage your lab equipment. It's part of the ring stand setup. A crucible is a small dish that has a cover. It's used for heating substances. You can apply a lot of heat to a crucible to cause a reaction. Wire mesh or wire gauze is used to absorb and spread the heat from the flame you would use that to help prevent your glassware from cracking and breaking. It's also part of the ring stand setup. A Bunsen burner is used to heat substances quickly or if you need to reach temperatures higher than 400 degrees Celsius. You cannot use a Bunsen burner with flammable substances since you do have an open flame. A ring stand and iron rings, that's what is kind of the base setup for your experiment. It can hold your glassware in place for heating or evaporating. Your iron ring is on the back of your handout. A volumetric flask is used to precisely prepare solutions. Volumetric flasks only measure one volume, but they measure that one volume very, very accurately. They are produced and then they have a line laser etched at the appropriate volume. So if you fill your volumetric glass to that line, you know you have exactly that amount of liquid or solution. A well plate is plastic. It contains 12 to 36 wells. 
and it can be used to hold liquids in the small experiments. That's very helpful when you're testing very small amounts of different substances. A mortar and pestle is used to grind substances into a powder or slurry if you need to break, um, say, maybe a tablet, if you need to break that apart and get it into a finer powder. A scoopula is used to scoop chemical powders. It's not going to be used as a measuring instrument, but you could use it in combination with a scale. That might be what you use to scoop chemicals out of a weigh boat onto a different weigh boat so that you can get the correct amount. A hot plate is used to heat and or stir substances. It can stir because it has magnets inside and we put magnetic stir bars into your beaker. And then if you turn on the stir function, when the magnet spins inside the hot plate, it spins your stir bar. Wash bottles usually contain um, deionized water. They're very helpful for rinsing glassware or for dispensing small amounts of water for your chemical reactions. A lot of times you'll also use these to bring your total solution up to the correct volume. Test tube brushes are used for cleaning. You should be cleaning your equipment before and after you use it. Stirring rods are used to stir your substances. You would need to clean those in between uses. These are something that you would also want to be very careful with. They will roll across the table and fall off and break. Stirring rods are some of the most frequently broken equipment in the lab. Evaporating dishes are used to evaporate excess liquids. That's a good way to separate a solid from a liquid and leave the solid behind. Watch glasses are used to show chemical reactions. You can cover a beaker with a watch glass and still see what's going on inside. You could also put something on a watch glass if you have a small amount and you want to see what's happening. A funnel is used to safely transfer substances from one container to another. Forceps are metal and are used to pick up or hold small objects. This is especially important if you don't want to touch something, if you're using maybe pH paper that could be impacted by what's on your hands, you would use forceps instead of just touching it directly. Barrel type pipettes are small pipettes. They're disposable. They're used to transfer small amounts of chemicals. If you have a graduated pipette, those can precisely measure amounts of chemicals but they will look a little bit different from the plastic barrel type pipettes that you see here. A striker is used to ignite gas from a Bunsen burner. Make sure that you don't waste the flint. This isn't on your outline, but it's something that you should know. A thermometer is used to measure temperature. Usually in class, we will use digital thermometers instead of the glass thermometers that look like this. Make sure that you are always measuring your temperature using the Celsius temperature scale. If you measure using Fahrenheit, you will have a lot of conversions to do before you can actually use your temperature measurements in your data. Digital balances we will also use frequently. They are used to accurately measure mass, and they can only hold up to 200 grams in our labs. Make sure that you don't put more weight on there compared to 200 grams because that could damage the scale. And then the last thing is going to be your goggles and apron. These are both for personal protection. The goggles protect your eyes. The apron protects your clothing from damage. And these are something that you should wear anytime you're in the lab.